We've had a range of different strandings in the last few weeks, all the way from the far north to Stewart Island and now out to the Chatham Islands. So you're talking about strandings across the, the entire breadth of New Zealand in, in a very short period of time, which naturally does cause everyone to reflect on whether those might have something to do with one another. There's no evidence at this stage to suggest that they're directly linked. Last summer was a La Nina summer. It's plausible that there's something different in the environment that is causing this to happen. Um, we don't have any direct evidence of that at this stage. So in many cases, particularly when you get mass strandings, um, the vast majority of the animals appear to be perfectly healthy. Well, we don't know exactly why individual strandings happen. There's probably a range of reasons um, why they occur. Um, anything from misnavigation, the animal's in an unfamiliar area, um, the terrain of the area is such that they, their um, wayfinding skills like echolocation don't work very well. Um, it could be that animals are injured. It could be that they're trying to escape from predators. It could be that there are man-made activities that are um, causing them to move inshore and end up on beaches. The reality is, in, in many cases, it's probably a combination of those factors. We've spent a lot of time, marine mammal biologists in general, have spent a lot of time over the years um, trying to sort out why these things are happening, of course, because nobody likes them. They're, they're quite tragic and, and we'd rather um, take measures to reduce those sorts of things. Um, but there hasn't been very much success in really trying to understand why they happen. A few of the man-made factors are things like uh, noise, activities that cause very loud noises like seismic surveying for petroleum and gas, um, dredging, pile driving, all of these things have been named. Military sonar is, is the only form of loud noise like that that's ever been directly linked to um, stranded animals on a beach. But there are hints that perhaps some of these other things may cause animals to become disoriented or injured or choose to move away from it and end up on a beach. L likewise, there can be naturally loud noises that occur, lightning strikes, underwater earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, that sort of thing, which can produce similar sorts of loud noises, which if it's the, the wrong animal in the wrong place, they may react in such a way that, that could cause that. There's very little evidence of that, but it's also very difficult to collect that evidence companies that are undertaking seismic surveying, either for petroleum or for geological research or any other reason, are required to abide by the code. That includes notifying the Department of Conservation um, three months in advance of undertaking a survey, uh, preparing impact assessments, and a range of other things. So we know quite well when that's happening. The last survey in New Zealand waters um, finished up earlier this year around about March or April. So it's been quite some time since there was surveying in New Zealand.